Oh. <laughs> I like that song she had in Titanic. <laughs> no. <laughs> Close. But no, I'm not even a huge Mariah Carey fan. I mean, I know it, and I, like, my boyfriend truly is. But I definitely 100% know that her, that she did not have the Titanic song. <laughs> you well, should sing it for us. And, yeah. like... <laughs> and I will always be Mariah. God. Okay. Becky has a very important question. Oh, I have another one. This is kind of going to like make or break the <laughs> This is a, a little bit of a callback from when we first first met you, but okay. Buffy and Angel or Buffy and Spike? Buffy and Angel? Oh! No! Yeah. Okay. I know. I'm Turn it off. People. Turn it off. I do. I mean, Hopeless I romantic. Are yeah. these friends of yours? Yes. Yeah. Yes. We go way back. Yeah. I mean, there's only actually like a substance of the show is. It's like something really problematic about like, oh yeah, it's her fault that he's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I saw the movie. <laughs> Different? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I imagine. It's, it's like the. Yeah. I've seen the gist. <laughs> the, mo the movie feels like it's just about Los Angeles. It's like, feels like the. Um, mm. Like, it feels like like, the ch like it feels like cheap ass, and I mean this in the best way, clueless or something. What was it like realizing your childhood dream of creating Jurassic Park the musical? That it that it that it failed miserably, and it was never gonna that it was never gonna happen. And, and even at a young age, realizing that you may have ambitions but not have the ability to make them happen, like the tragedy of that. <laughs> I have to also say that I've never actually. Said this was an adult. Jurassic Park was the first of an attempt to try to do a stage production of a of a mainstream Hollywood film. The first, the second attempt, which which failed even more miserably, that I don't really remember as much, is I also tried to do The Lion King. Did <laughs> <laughs> you not? A year later, because I thought the first one was so successful, not like ma making one. Or like one or five dinosaurs. The idea of making the entire cast into animals wasn't going to happen. <laughs> you said the Lion King, right? I did. Yeah. So I saw that when I was like ten or eleven on stage. Was that not it was, your? That it was different. <laughs> I was going to ask about the Broadway adaptation of your Jurassic Park musical, but it sounded like that's not. Not in the you know, we'll see. There's still there's still time, but I feel like it's not gonna happen. I mean, my my stage for my, my mini stage production, I was able to travel the my dream, which actually maybe it still could happen because I did it. I did a, ver, a little version of it in Argentina, like a really little, like a small like, hallway, um, which is like kind of fun to redo it from going from human resources to a hallway. <laughs> satisfying. It makes no sense. I really, like, my goal afterwards, and then there was a, you know, a pandemic, is I really wanted to do it in Costa Rica. Like, I wanted to see if I could get to the island. <laughs> <laughs> and do it on the island. That would be amazing. And speaking of which, okay. let's rank the Jurassic Park movies. Okay. One is the, I feel like they're all kind of like, one, okay. One is number one. Obviously the best. Yeah. Um, but I mean, if someone wants to argue that, then that's all you. And I actually probably one of the few movies that have, of Spielberg I like, because I don't really like Spielberg movies. I think they're all kind of terrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that was good. Um, I like parts of the second one. I like the second half where it just goes bonkers and the, and the T Rex is wandering through San Diego for no <laughs> reason. There's just real no. I, I had never seen the third one until recently, but like, you know, it's like the past couple of years. Um, it's terrible, but there is a scene where he has a dream and the, and the velociraptor <laughs> talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great moment. It's really the only, like if I can first like 20 minutes of the movie, I'd be the only reason to watch it. I have read the script of the fourth one that they never made, or I've read parts of the script, like maybe the first two pages. Where they bred like humans and 
bounces <laughs> into each other. This is getting back to your <laughs> sexy cat people. Yeah. I was gonna make um, a joke about oh, they probably made them human dinosaurs, but no, it's, it's a real thing. I like the beginning. I like it in the in the the ship the one where they actually the fourth one where they they actually open the park. I like when we got to see the first few minutes of the actual park working, and then it like they kind of kill it off. I was like, just show us the park. We've been waiting for fucking twenty years. Yeah. <laughs> we just want to come to the park. I would, I would watch a two-hour movie of just people having fun at Jurassic Park. Yeah, that's what I want. And then I never saw the last one. It actually they weirdly got kind of sad. So I like 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 heartbreak sad, and I was like, yeah, I don't, I, I'm, I'm good. That that Chris Pratt was really great. And that doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> this would be a good time for the auction segment. <laughs> right. I can. Do you want to explain the thing? Um, you can explain. Okay. <laughs> can any of us really explain it? So we're looking at recently sold artworks in auction houses. And I hope you like have one of my artworks, which I've never sold at auction, but that would be amazing. Uh, I think that would be an unfair advantage. I mean, how we like you, but we can't let you have the answers ahead of time. I mean, if, Beck, if you want to send me the real one, I'll just, I'll, I'll give, I won't say the exact number. I'll just like, I'll, I'll try to get as close as I can without anyone knowing. Okay, I, I have it in front of me. The first one, and we'll like pop them up on the screen or something. Right, yeah. okay. First one is Nara, right? Night yeah, behind that. Y- Yoshimoto. I want to say three million. All right. And... I'm trying not to react and I'm terrible. I, <laughs> I, I'm probably going to do some of this. Um, okay, good idea. So the okay. next image we have is Pablo Picasso, Buste de Matador from 1980. This one... I feel like this one was right recently sold at, at a high number. I remember this, but I have no idea how much it was for. Um, Twenty-five million. Right. And our next self-portrait. Um, I'm not familiar with this artist's work, so I'm gonna say a million. Okay. Okay. The next one. Um, so the next one is uh, No Wahala from 2019. I'm holding the picture. Oh, oh, that's that's an attractive painting. <laughs> <Is it? laughs> right? <laughs> this looks really beautiful. Okay, this is the pink one, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't also know this work. Um, Three hundred thousand. And our last one <laughs> is Nicole Eisenman, Close to the Edge. Uh, uh, 500,000. All right. Do you think that's after the 80s um, hip hop song? I hope so. <laughs> White Light. Oh. Right? Yeah, I think so. Where are you going? I left my cards. Oh, okay. It's like we're doing a show here. <laughs> Seriously. Um, Nick's got some questions. Okay. Uh, yeah. Marvel or DC? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Did you say Marvel or DC or Marvel? <laughs> yes. Uh, Marvel. <laughs> Marvel or DC? Um. I feel like I like Batman. Um, are we going with movies? Or are we going with the com? I don't read comics, but uh, are these based on comics? <laughs> I'm going with. Why not? I'm gonna go with DC. Why not? No, okay. the Snyder head. Yeah. My boyfriend really is a Snyder head. I am. <laughs> I'm thinking like I'm thinking like ninety is like important. Okay, the good mm-hmm. ones. Did yeah. you see the, Did you see the Snyder cut? Um, it it played in my house. Well, <laughs> on my phone in my bedroom. 
define art in exactly 10 words? No more, no less. <laughs> no more, no less. <laughs> oh, I got it. Looks good over my couch and sells well at auction. Yes! <laughs> That's good. That was fantastic. Um, no biggie. What's your most personal secret? <laughs> Ever or like right now? Uh, both. Well, right now I'm looking up Rid Riddler dresses after speaking. <laughs> <about that. laughs> like I'm trying to find like something like really chic that doesn't look like Halloween costume. <laughs> I'll give you a spoiler alert: they all look like Halloween costumes. <laughs> <laughs> For children. Um, what is the most personal? My most personal. Oh, goodness. Um, I feel like I think if it's that personal, I probably forgot about it, and if and if not, I will probably, I'll probably end up in an artwork at some point. <laughs> it's all on the table. I'm I'm surprised you considered answering that question. Yeah, I hope no one does. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I was like, oh god, it's gonna it's gonna get real serious here. I know. Get legally implicated. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's take a quick commercial break. Introducing Blue Ants, Consumed Body Purification System, the dietary intervention everyone is talking about. To activate your purification system, locate your unit's imprint slot. Stick the finger of your choosing into the imprint slot until you feel a slight prick on the tip of your finger. Remove your finger from the slot. And within seconds, your consumed body purification system will begin brewing a delicious, refreshing, cleansing, meal replacing drink comprised of nothing but your very own cloned and liquefied biological matter. The consumed body purification system. Drink yourself to feel like yourself. Available wherever Blue Ant products are sold. Makes a great gift. Okay, are we, are we back from commercial break? Oh, yeah, yeah. we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. And we're back. With power. We're back. <laughs> Hi, oh. everyone. Hi, again. <laughs> hey. Um. Hi, Mom and Dad. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm so sorry, Mom and Dad. Um. Do you have a question? A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. How many birds do you need? Six. Six it is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you want to buy Nick's old car? It no. may or may not exist. It may be in the CalArts parking lot for the last five years. <laughs> that, is it going to like come with like a boot on the, on the tire and a lot of parking tickets? I imagine that the tires have rotted away. Yes, I imagine the tires have rotted away. <laughs> what kind of car is it? It's a 2004 Chevy Malibu, uh, about 90,000 miles. Oh, uh, that's not many. Has a, has a blown gasket though. Mm. So. Yeah. I mean, it would be my biggest, per like my literal <laughs> biggest purchase I would have ever made. So, you know, I might like drive towards there and then end up at Six Flags instead. So <laughs> I'm gonna say no. Oh, sorry, Nick. That was close. Maybe next time. And that was time. the third priority of the show. <laughs> okay. So uh, we're going to run a clip of your work. Do you want to set us up for it? Uh, the clip that you're about to see is from my work. And um, I'm very excited to share it with you. And yeah, I think the rest will explain itself to four or five different chapters. And we're back. <laughs> and we're back. That was fantastic. Thank you. That was very brief. You know, I worked hard on that. <laughs> um, and it did speak for itself. 
I don't know if um, We've heard from a lot of people you're very good at impressions. Can you That's show us true. One? Um, is there a preferred impression that I need to be doing? Um, just show us your favorite. Okay, I'm gonna do the three of you right now. Oh, Wait, there, there. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so you have to focus. P because my first and last name starts with it. Um, so it's a little bit of a default on that. I feel like I, you know, I know it at this point. Powerful letter. <laughs> Thank um, you. What's your middle name? That's my deepest secret. Oh. <laughs> we got so close. <laughs> so close. Does anyone want to ask something before we get to the big question? Oh. When do, when do I start asking you, two, you three questions? Um, in the credits. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's Riddler! <laughs> our segment called Beyond Belief. That's the name, right? Yes. yes. All right. Fact or fiction. With um, Riker from Star Trek. <laughs> right. Oh, it looks impressive. Okay. And the question is, can you remember the tallest man you've ever seen? Possibly. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Did you, did you do Did you want to know who he was? Or you to know? I this is more just about uh, your recall skills. Yeah, so I'm glad. No, I think I think I remember. Okay, we may have slept together. Oh shit! But I, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's also my biggest secret. When was the last time you were in Vegas? Nick's a Vegas person. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> September? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to cut that, right? <laughs> <laughs> wait. wait, wait. Ooh, is this, I'm thinking of being a gambler. <laughs> Thanks, pal. To me. <laughs> that my cohort are uh, committed to no medium. They uh, all work interdisciplinarily. I like that about them. Uh, I identify with that. I like to see what shapes it takes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I absolutely agree that something in our studio visits, I've been really impressed, um, especially last night at that amazing artist talk that we both liked so much. Everyone talking about that their undergraduate experience was not in multidisciplinary uh, practices. So to see everyone really jump in both feet um, and the really impressive results, like it speaks uh, to the quality of the program you guys have. Anti-disciplinary. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't really, I think we talked about ducks and sheds. Um, yeah, I, I still don't quite understand. <laughs> I don't know who I'm supposed to feed bread to or... <laughs> um, <laughs> I've recently been made aware that the Longer Burger Basket Factory is for sale. It's a fantastic example of a duck, which is a building that looks like the thing that it does. Uh, the Longer Burger Basket Factory produces Longer Burger Baskets. Um, and that's something that you can decode from uh, the side of the road. You don't have to get up any closer to the building to see what it does. 
right. I just want to say longer burger basket. <laughs> that is. That's I was a really intrigued by. That. <laughs> give it a try. It feels good. Longer burger basket. Yeah. <laughs> I think. It's is that like, just a hot dog? I don't know. Do you, is the basket part of the food? A longer burger. Um. I don't know what goes in the basket. Probably the bread. But I guess a duck is like the wienermobile of buildings. That's a perfect uh, analogy. Okay. Let's see. I thought about the wienermobile recently. I thought that maybe, you know, one day I can own one and that will be my bookmobile and I'll park it, you know, near the beach in uh, Malibu and that's. That is how I'll live my postgraduate school life. Those are going to be some disappointed kids running up and be like, yes, some, some hot dogs on the beach. Would you like a book? <laughs> Sorry, it's my time to ascend. <laughs> Bye! Oh, is there anything you want to tell us about coming up um, that you have? Uh, the ducks are going to be on the road to uh, the Holland Project at Reno. Ooh, Ooh that's exciting. When is that? Uh, it'll be in June. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can you tell us about that? Uh, there's a group exhibition uh, curated by my friend Kristen Howe at Holland Project. It has a long name. Who we were, when we were, who we once were. Don't quote me. <laughs> <laughs>because we want to give prospective students an opportunity to get to see what the professors are like personally, um, more than just your amazing headshot oh or um, <laughs> your work online, like who we are as people. What classes do you teach? Uh, I usually teach uh, the graphic design 3D model class, but lately I've also taught um, the beginning graphic design studio courses and the design research and methods course, which actually has been really, really fun. I love those courses. They are like my new favorites. What are the design research and methods courses? Uh, that's basically just kind of like taking design and thinking about how to make it more like academic in a way, <laughs> maybe slightly opposite of what the goal was here. But um, <laughs> basically, it's just like, how do you think about stuff? You know, like, I think we take for granted, like some of the, some of the things that we do, like almost automatically as we're deeper, maybe in the creative field as like, I guess, mature artists and designers. So this is kind of like a primer in a way. So I don't know, it's really cool to see the students go from the beginning of the class to the end of the class, because Usually they come out with like some amazing stuff and you're like, wow, I'm so happy that you guys are like thinking that way now. Can you rank the different art media? Like, like painting and sculpture and like what's the best? Performance. And what's then the best? And wow. what's the worst? Yeah, this is a subjective question. <laughs> um, we are objective, well, thank you. Since I got my MFA in sculpture, um, I have a very good argument for this before. It was a very funny one that my friend presented to me once, but sculpture is kind of at the top because even drawing is sculptural at a microscopic level. Ooh, science. <laughs> I like that a lot. Yeah, so that's good. Uh, the correct answer was performance. Here's another serious question. Um, who do you want to be when you grow up? I... Can I be, can I be a... Uh, you can't say chimpanzee X -Man? again. X-Men? X-Men! Ooh! Can I be an X-Men? <laughs> Which what, one? Yeah, what, what's your mutant power? Oh, I, don't, I just want to be beast. Like, something about being able to stick to things and, like, use my feet just sounds so cool. <laughs> Michael loves <laughs> this. <laughs> he loves this. back to the chimpanzee. <laughs> I'm a terrible, I'm a terrible self-promoter. I just hope everyone has a good summer. It's <laughs> <laughs> like the yearbook entry. Have a great summer. <laughs> I'm a terrible promoter. I just hope everyone just have a good summer. <laughs> oh, that's the sweetest answer we've had so yeah. far. Michael, that was wonderful. Thank you so much for stopping by.
All right. Thank you very much for having me. Thank All right, Michael. Have a good day. Good and then you. Goodbye. Have a great summer. What classes do you teach? Um, I teach a, uh, a course, a seminar in visual arts called uh, with the theme of Las Vegas as the topic. And then I teach a Friday class, uh, which you've visited, um, or maybe you haven't as talk show hosts, but um, we're the same a, people. Uh, what was that? We're the same people. We okay, can't, we can't people. do characters. Okay. We're not that good of actors. <laughs> It, um, it's, a, it's also a, it's a graduate faculty it's, it's a graduate faculty uh, studio seminar uh, which focuses on critique. Okay, and so and, um, oh, and I'm also teaching a gallery practices class with undergraduate students. So oh, that's a good class to have. I feel like some programs mm -hmm. don't uh, help with that aspect of your practice. Can you show us your best critique face? <laughs> it, it, well, like a virtual critique phase is like something like this. Oh. So I just like really be, have become aware of like uh, how I can have this like close face um, and how big my head looks on the screen. So does it look big right now? You're on a giant TV. Oh, so. it's getting bigger. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh. yeah, I like. Um, on when you're on the phone and depending on the angle you can like create a Habsburg jaw or you can have a little cone head um, yeah. or like the bags under your eyes just get really big and dark yeah. depending upon the angle you really get to control yeah. your first impression in a unique way yes so, this is our co-host Napoleon oh okay I was gonna ask if that was Ed McMahon <laughs> <laughs> No, guest. he's going to bite me in a moment and security's going to escort him off. <laughs> Is there anything that you have coming up in summer that you'd like to promote or talk about on the show? Well, there's a project that I'm working on with other artists in the Las Vegas community that is going to happen in Bentonville, Arkansas. Um, called Live in America, and it's a, like an inaugural live art festival that features like eight different communities that are un underrepresented communities, I would say. And um, so I'm really about, excited about that because it's creating a platform for Las Vegas artists and um, performance art in particular, um, different live art experiences. Um, and then uh, I'm, I'm part of a group exhibition um, with actually former uh, graduate, you know, co I, my former graduate cohort. So that's um, happening this summer in Las Vegas. So I'm kind of looking forward to that because it's been making me like, again, kind of rethink that graduate experience that I had and how that, you know, relates to my work as a graduate educator. So, yeah. Class reunion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it will be a class reunion too. So, um, and our, our mentor wrote a statement, which is really great. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for making the time for this. Um, oh, thank you for having me. Feel free to like chop the hell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we will. Let's listen to the sewer.